Hey guys, Andy here, and welcome to my 15 year YouTube anniversary. Woo, yeah. The 1st of March marks my four, that's right, four year anniversary. Today is my five year anniversary as a YouTuber. Today is my uh, six year YouTube anniversary. In addition to this being my March 2013 update video, it's also going to be my seven year YouTube anniversary videos. All right, gang, we're recording. Hey, Andy here. Coming at you with my eight year anniversary slash March 2014 update video for, you guessed it, March 2014. Woo. So yeah, it's uh, March, which is also my nine year anniversary on YouTube. Can you guys believe it? So yeah, in addition to this being my monthly update video for March of 2016, it's also my 10 year YouTube anniversary video. Woo, yeah. <laughs> All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. And today is my 11 year anniversary on YouTube. Yeah. 13 years on YouTube, that is insane. Hard to believe I've been on the platform for a decade and a half, and a lot has happened during that time. So, let's get into it. On March 1st, 2006, or March 2nd, if you're living in Japan, I started this very YouTube channel that you watch me on right now. My only intentions with starting this channel was to simply be able to follow YouTubers that I really liked and to leave comments on their videos. Some of the YouTubers that I followed very early on back in the day were guys like Tokyo Kuni and of course the late great Roger Swan. Left a lot of comments on their videos. Sadly, a lot of them have been lost to time thanks to the Google Plus comment merger that happened back in like 2012, 2014. I was able to keep in contact with those folks and I was very passionate about being able to live in Japan someday and it's thanks to watching their videos it showed that uh, life in Japan was very possible and not just some far-flung fantasy. From there I also uploaded a couple YouTube videos but wasn't really too serious about it. Uh, it was mostly just some clips and stuff that uh, my friends put together with their cameras. It was just a way for us to watch those videos without whipping out good old VCDs. I don't know if y'all remember those, but uh, it's taking it back a bit, huh? But it was just a way for us to document those clips. That way we wouldn't have to keep pulling out the VCDs and like rewinding and fast forwarding to uh, certain parts. And we could all look at them online, wherever we were at. But a funny thing happens when you're on YouTube for a while, you start to get the itch to do it yourself. About two years later, on September 2nd, 2008, just a day after Labor Day in the States, I decided to get my very first camera, the Sanyo Zacti CG6. Originally, I got the camera to be able to take pictures of stuff that I was selling on eBay at the time, as well as do vlogging just on the side, just, you know, to kind of learn how to do it. And I didn't really take it all too seriously at the time because my main thing was blogging. I really started making content online back in 2004, just shortly before I graduated high school. I know, your boy's a bit old. Originally, I was gonna do vlogging to accompany certain blog posts, but I ended up loving vlogging so much that I ended up switching from blogging to vlogging and uh, I've been doing it pretty much ever since. And it was also during this time, which was the great economic recession of the uh, late 2000s, early 2010s. At the time, I was a college dropout with no real job prospects or anything, really. Got to a point to where I couldn't get any work, like anywhere. I decided to join the US Navy in 2010, and thanks to the power of YouTube, I documented my entire Navy career from 2010 when I enlisted to 2015 when I got out. During that time, I vlogged about my experiences not only in basic training, but also ATT school, which is apprentice technical training which was like a basic electronics course to going out to San Diego to learn my rate or my job in the Navy as an STG or sonar technician for surface ships, as well as being stationed on my very first ship, the USS Kurtz, FFG 38, 38 Special. I vlogged that last deployment in 2012, our Twilight Cruise. Once the ship was decommissioned, I transferred over to USS Lassen DG82 out in Yokosuka, Japan. It was for the very first time 
that I was able to live in Japan and I was able to vlog my entire experience living there through the Andy Japandi series and I was very passionate about that YouTube series and being able to make videos was my main passion. It allowed me to exercise my creativity and it helped alleviate a lot of stress that was going on in my life, especially being forward deployed in Japan. Things eventually came to a head because of all the stresses on the ship, eventually got out processed and went back to America to go back to school now in my 30s. So I had a lot of stumbling blocks in doing that just because I had a lot of emotional baggage from my time in the Navy and I just didn't know how to deal with that. I kind of stumbled my way through school initially, decided to take a break for a bit to go back home to my folks in Ohio to get my head on straight and go back to college later. During that time, we started a video production company and I just learned a lot more about uh, the technical aspect of video editing. Because before, like my early YouTube videos were very cut paste, cut paste, there wasn't really a whole lot to it editing wise, but it was thanks to working for my family's production company, as well as editing for other YouTubers, which I started doing once I went back to America, that I became more curious about how to really put stuff together and became a lot more serious about doing that. It was also during that time I got to talking with uh, one of my former shipmates because he had just gotten out of the Navy at that time and he was going out to school out in Japan, going to Temple University. I was talking with him because at the time I didn't know that you could use the GI Bill to study overseas. I thought you had to study in America, but he explained the whole process of how he got in and it kind of gave me that uh, itch to go back to Japan again. But at the time my GPA was really low, so I decided to go to a community college to rehab my GPA and then apply to colleges out in Japan. From there, I decided to pack my bags and head out to North Carolina to stay with uh, my brother for about a year and some change to work on rehabbing my GPA saving up and applying to schools out in Japan. From there, I got accepted out to Lakeland University of Japan out in Shinjuku. At the end of 2019, got on a flight out there and uh, began my journey to Japan once again, but this time on my own. And as you guys know what happened in 2020, a certain global pandemic occurred. Now, obviously, there's more important issues going on with that. But as far as how it affected me, it basically nixed my plans to really restart the Andy Japandi series and to go out to the places that I was looking at online and make videos and to also remake old videos from the original Andy Japandi series. I was really depressed, to be honest with you guys, because I felt like it took me nearly five years to get myself back out to Japan between rehabbing my GPA and saving up and just all that and it felt like it was just taken away from me like that. But I've been given a whole bunch of new opportunities behind the camera. In addition to just editing stuff, I also shoot stuff for people out here. And I feel like ultimately that would be my main career move to be behind the camera versus being in front of it. And since coming back to the country, I've worked with many people out here uh, doing filming as well as editing. And also, on my 35th birthday, on December 7th, 2020, I graduated from Lakeland University of Japan with my associate's degree. And since graduating, I've continued to stay out here in Japan doing video editing work as well as video shooting work. But I do plan on going back to school next month to continue on for my bachelor's degree out at Lakeland University of Japan. And it's just surreal to think that I've been able to document that all with you guys on YouTube. I just wanna thank you guys for tuning in to my videos over the years, and uh, here's to many more. So, with that said guys, this is the Andy San, signing for now, as always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. Hey guys, Andy here, and it's really been a while, hasn't it, since I've made one of these, uh, what do you call them? Oh yeah, videos. <laughs> so yeah, I've decided to finally come back to the YouTubes, and I'm proud to announce that we're gonna be making some more quality content soon. 
So the tentative idea, because I don't want to give out a schedule because y'all know how that goes with me, right? But the tentative idea is to um, continue to do live streams on this channel that you're watching me on right now. But I'm also planning on doing some more streams outside once uh, I get done moving here, which we're gonna be talking about here in a little bit. And then for the editing channel, I'm planning on making some more video editing tutorials. Um, over the past couple months, I've been compiling a bunch of video editing tutorial ideas and I want to start checking those off the list. So I'll be on the lookout for more tutorials from that channel coming soon. Then as for the Andy Japandi channel, I'm planning on doing a weekly live stream where I learn Japanese. So that's going to be really fun to do one of these little, I think they're called like study with me type live streams. Um, so once I get all the material and all that um, assembled and ready for streaming, then uh, we'll begin the weekly live streams from the Andy Japandi channel. Be on the lookout for all that stuff coming soon. So now that we've gone over the youtube -y stuff, let's get into the personal life stuff, right? So, getting some old monthly update vlog vibes right now, not gonna lie. But uh, yeah, so the reason I haven't been making much uh, in terms of video content on my channels is simply because I really needed to take a break after graduating from Lakeland University of Japan last year under the associates program. Uh, I was just really burnt out with school and trying to maintain commitments with uh, video editing gigs and shoots and just everything else that I was just burnt to a crisp, basically, and really needed to take a break. And for those of you who are on YouTube, you definitely understand that um, quarter one, January through March, AdSense doesn't really pay a whole heck of a lot. So if you are going to take a break, those are the prime months to do it. So I figured it just right place, right time, right? <laughs> and plus, since I'm not on the, on the uh, GI Bill anymore, I needed to maintain my income somehow, right? So I figured um, just take a pause on a lot of things and uh, just work my ass off until classes start back up in the summer. And I've been seeing a lot of success in doing that, not just being a video editor, but also being a shooter as well. I've been really enjoying being more active in that approach and it's really helped me financially as well. But at the same time, it has come at the expense of my own YouTube videos and had me feeling some kind of way, especially uh, come March 1st, which was my 15 year anniversary on YouTube. And even though I made the video and was, was proud of it, I still felt in a lot of ways like, you know, I've been on YouTube for 15 years now. And it's like, all right, let's put some of my own videos out there, right? But then I started getting into like video editor mode of, well, I don't know if my content's good enough for the algorithm and I don't know if the amount of time that I put into my own videos is gonna pay off in terms of AdSense and this, that, and the other. So I ended up just putting it off and uh, in favor of editing for other people, which was much more lucrative for me. But I still felt some kind of way about it, so. That's why I decided to come back to YouTube in this way. So doing a lot more live stream content because I don't have to sit down and edit it. And the video editing tutorials are pretty easy to put together, to be honest. That way I can still make that quality content for you guys while still maintaining my other commitments. Does this mean that I'll never ever make videos for this channel or the Andy Japandi channel ever again? Not really. It just means they're not gonna be a regular part of those channels uh, for the time being. Once circumstances change, that might also change, but that's just the situation as it is now. So yeah, during that break, I was doing a lot of thinking about stuff, I'm doing some talking with uh, Eric Surf 6 about stuff, and he wants to, me to be uh, more involved with his channel, not just, you know, editing videos, but also shooting more videos so he wants me to live a bit closer to where he's at and he gave me a little tour of his um, local neighborhood out in the Shonan area south of Kanagawa and to be honest I just fell in love with it you know like when 
I moved back to Japan. I really wanted to be by the ocean again, but I knew that in going to school at Lakeland and my other video commitments in Tokyo, it just wouldn't really be logistically feasible with the uh, long commute times and all that kinds of stuff. But with the shift to doing more stuff online, it all of a sudden became a lot more feasible. And I figured we're not gonna be doing in-person classes or anything like that anytime soon. So why am I sticking so close to Tokyo, right? And even if I do wanna go to Tokyo, the commute isn't too bad, all things considered, especially if I'm only going in like once or twice a week at most, if at all. <laughs> so I figured, fuck it, let's uh, move closer to the ocean and found a nice, lovely place out uh, by the harbor. Uh, we're gonna be doing a tour of that apartment this coming week. And if all goes according to plan, I'll be uh, moving down there within the next couple weeks. So we're gonna be looking forward to doing uh, some more live stream work, not just in, in inside uh, this guest room, but also um, at my new apartment. And outside of my new apartment as well, doing some uh, beach live streams. So really, really looking forward to it. And it's also giving me more motivation to learn Japanese. As I said earlier, we're gonna be doing some weekly learning Japanese live streams on the Andy Japandi channel. Because uh, the further away from the big cities like Tokyo you go, hey that rhymed, <laughs> uh, the less English is spoken out in those areas. And plus, you know, I wanted to improve my Japanese for a while now. It's just I never really set aside some time to, to do it because I was always either busy working on school or working on videos or I just wasn't in a productive state to really do anything. So, yeah, we're throwing all them excuses out the window here, folks. Spring has definitely sprung for the old Andy San, Sam Adishta. And I'm really looking forward to making more of that quality content for you guys. And it feels like things are really starting to kick off for me. So I just wanna thank you guys uh, for your patience during this uh, much longer hiatus than I anticipated. Um, and uh, for watching my stuff and talking with me in the Discord as well. Uh, if you guys wanna join, links always in the description down below. And uh, with that said, this is Andy San. Sign up for now. As always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. Andy here. And today, I figured I'd give you all a little update on the state of the Andy San. As far as YouTube stuff goes, I've been uh, pretty busy streaming on this channel in particular. And because of that, I've decided by popular demand to make all of my live streams public. So before, I would just make my most recent live stream public and that's just so that way you'd be able to go through and find my pre-recorded content a lot easier rather than having to wade through a whole bunch of live streams. But since I'm not making as much pre-recorded content for this channel as I used to, I figure, eh, what the hell. <laughs> we'll just make all the live streams public. So at least it shows that I'm doing something on this channel, right? So now you guys can uh, safely enjoy the uh, live streams and whatnot. And of course, they're always on the My Live Streams playlist as well. So if you wanna marathon that, be my guest. And as far as other content for the Andy Japani channel, I've been looking through a lot of uh, older footage that I had recorded last year that I didn't get around to putting together just because of time, basically. And I definitely wanna get those videos out as well. Some of them are a little long, kind of think of like day in the life of a Japanese study abroad student, uh, something in that vein. And most of them are kind of short as well. And then as far as my editing channel goes, Adam Media, I've noticed a definite downturn in the amount of people watching my tutorial videos. And my recent tutorial video didn't really do all that well either. So I've had to think of a new strategy for that channel. And I have a really good idea for upcoming content for that channel. I don't wanna hype it up too much, but uh, right now I'm just in the planning stages for some new quality content for that channel in particular that I see pretty much nobody else really doing. 
So it's gonna be a very interesting, to say the least. And as far as personal life goes, well, just did my first full week back at Lakeland University of Japan under the bachelor's program. Uh, still doing the whole online classes thing, which allows me to work from home and gives me a lot more flexibility with my schedule for other things as well. And not gonna lie, you know, it feels good to, uh, to be back in school. You know, it just feels right. And I just can't wait to uh, finish things up at Lakeland, get my bachelor's degree, and uh, get a work visa out here in Japan. But uh, yeah, things are definitely moving in the right direction. Sorry, I'm not really updating guys as much as I'd like as far as the goings on and getting more specific about things. Uh, mostly just because I want to jinx it. And also, stuff happens. So, you never know. Got a lot of good things to look forward to on the horizon, you know, working with new people on new projects. And speaking of new projects, this will be the last little bit here. I'm looking at getting a new camera. So, just had a video shoot a couple weeks back where, you know, somebody else is gonna bring in a bunch of cameras and whatnot, and they forgot one of the key cameras for the shoot. And it just kind of was what it was. I'm not really blaming them at all. But it did kind of set up a red flag in, in my brain saying, you know, what if like something happened to the equipment? Like what if it either got lost or got damaged or, you know, battery failed or SD card was on the fritz or something, you know, with, uh, with camera gear, it's always something, right? You know, what if I had to do this entire shoot with just this camera right here. And considering the other types of gear that they were using, um, it wouldn't really have matched the style. And plus I've been having problems with this camera for a while now. So I figure now's a good time to, uh, to upgrade and get myself back into the Sony family. So really looking forward to that. At the end of the month, hopefully is what I'm planning. I'll be uh, purchasing the new Sony Alpha A7 C camera. Originally I was gonna go for the a7 III, but after looking at some reviews and stuff like that for it, I totally forgot about the record limit. And seeing as a lot of my gigs have a really long run times, uh, just setting it up on the tripod and hitting record just uh, didn't get a cutter for that camera. So I figured I'd just get the a7C plus. It has the newer Sony autofocus system, which is just so on it. You know, I tried both cameras out at uh, one of the Japanese camera stores out in Tokyo, and the a7C was just on it every single time. Now, does it have its drawbacks? Of course. And we'll be getting into that with an unboxing slash review. I think, you know, for me, and especially for the price point, getting back into the Sony family and also into the full frame family, say that three times fast, um, it's definitely gonna be a good camera to get me started, so. Anyway, that's uh, all I wanted to say in this little update video. So, with that said, guys, this is the Andy San. Signing for now. As always, forever. We'll see you next time. Get to you later, guys. Bye. Hey, guys, Andy here. And today, just wanted to come on with this little raw vliggity vlog update on the state of the Andy San and uh, just talk about some stuff and things. So, I'm not going to cut anything out. It's just going to be all one, one take see that so just want to discuss some updates uh to some of the channels on here um i decided to change the names of both this channel as well as my former adam media channel and the reason behind that is is well i just want everything to kind of have a nice consistent branding and i felt that adam media the name didn't really jive with the other two channels so i decided to change that to edit by andy and really excited about the name we're gonna be doing a new logo uh very soon so be on the lookout for that as well as some new content for that channel that i've been promising you guys for a while now uh including some reaction content uh kind of going over and breaking down certain videos that i really enjoy 
in trying to glean certain elements of that particular editing style. I don't really see a whole lot of editors talking about that sort of content online. And I really want to, you know, show what I know online, basically. So be on the lookout for that sort of stuff coming soon. Well, soonish. <laughs> and then as for this channel, I decided to change it from the Andy San to just Andy. It's like the Facebook, just Facebook, just Andy. So I did that just because I felt like with this being my personal channel, having it with that, the Andy San name made it seem a little more Japan themed, even though, yeah, I'm in Japan. I live here guys. We out here. But I wanted the uh, Japan themed content to be focused more on uh, Andy Japandi, which uh, will remain unchanged as far as the name goes, because it's such a good name. Hit it right out of the park first time around. Uh, but as far as this channel goes, yeah, it'll be my personal channel slash miscellaneous type channel. So for content that doesn't really fit under the purview of the other two channels, it's going to go here as well as uh, other updates and stuff like that. So the general gist of it's going to change. Uh, I'll probably change the cover art at least fairly soon. Profile picture might change. I think it's, uh, it's been enough time to uh, warrant a change and especially with the, uh, the goatee and everything. I think it'd be nice to uh, give a good update for that. So I'll be on the lookout for those things coming soon. And then as for the Andy Japandi channel, uh, there's really no changes that are going to be going on with that one. But I just want to thank you guys for all the support with the uh, Q&A Andy Japandi series. I uh, was initially a little hesitant to bring it back just because I didn't really know what the audience reception to that would be. You know, just me reading off a bunch of stock questions and stuff. But you guys really seem to uh, have taken to that series and really appreciative for that. So I have another episode of Q&A in Japan D about halfway edited at this point. And I'm going to try to get it out probably by the end of this week, but uh, we'll see. So as far as uh, personal life stuff goes, which is why I'm a little noncommittal to uh, hard dates <laughs> is because uh, this week is midterms. So I'm going to be primarily occupied with that. So that's why I haven't said, yeah, this video is going to come out this day or whatever. Uh, so I'm a little nervous, but uh, also excited and uh, just looking forward to continuing on here as a uh, student once again at uh, Lakeland University of Japan, now under the bachelor's program. So just keep on keeping on. And also another little update is that I finally bought a new camera. So I finally decided to put down some real big boy money and buy the Sony a7C. And it also comes with a kit lens as well. Originally, I was just going to get the body and then just get a, uh, a lens secondhand. But I found a really good deal online. So I decided to take it and it came with a kit lens. So why not? <laughs> why not, right? So that's going to be coming in about a week or two, depending on shipping and all that sorts of fun stuff. <laughs> they estimated about a week or two weeks. So we'll see. But yeah, I definitely expect an unboxing video for that for sure. Really looking forward to uh, being back in the Sony family and as part of the full frame family. This is going to be my first full frame camera. I've always had... Uh, crop sensors, whether it was uh, APS-C with the uh, original Sony's, uh, Micro Four Thirds with Panasonic G85, stuff like that. Cell phone, obviously a much smaller sensor. So it's gonna be nice to uh, have some real uh, processing power behind my gear this time around. And just really looking forward to it, man. And as far as uh, other projects outside of YouTube, um, Definitely making some plans for uh, upcoming events. And I'm just overall just really excited, man. Like things are really starting to come together. And, you know, I was looking back at uh, some of my older videos and was just thinking like, man, it wasn't really that long ago when I was uh, 
living at my brother's house out in North Carolina, sleeping on a mattress on the floor and just uh, scraping together every cent that I had to uh, put towards my go to Japan fund. And now been out here for over a year, uh, living life, doing good things. Going to be getting my bachelor's degree, fingers crossed, uh, by next year. Uh, plan to have it by the end of summer semester next year, if all things work out, you know, depending on classes and all that kinds of stuff. So really excited for that because once I get my bachelor's degree, it's going to be a lot easier to uh, find employment and everything out here in Japan where that's like the, the main entry point, basically. So despite not having a bachelor's degree at the time of this recording, I have been able to make the most of it and I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, finishing school, finishing it strong. So once again, just want to say thanks for uh, tuning in to all my stuff, even though my upload schedule has been all over the place. And I'm just really looking forward to the new changes for my channels and just new stuff. So with that said, guys, this is Andy. Sign off for now. As always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. Andy here. Today, just wanted to make a little raw Liggity Vlog update on what else? The state of Andy. So, as you guys know, I am on my last year at Lakeland University, Japan, under the bachelor's program. So, at this time, next year, 2022, woo, I should be all graduated with my bachelor's degree this time. So it should be pretty easy for me to get my work visa out here and continue to stay out here in Japan. But over these past couple weeks while on break in between semesters, I've been doing a lot of thinking about life, the universe, everything really. And just trying to figure out where I want to go in life, you know, like, I've said before, you know, the obvious easy route for me to take once I get my degree is to just apply to be an English teacher and get the easy paycheck, get the easy visa, and uh, just continue to uh, side hustle on film projects and stuff like that. But truth be told, I'm just not really all that jazzed about teaching English. Now, don't get it twisted. I have a lot of friends who are English teachers. That's kind of the funny thing that happens. You make foreign friends out here in Japan. T turns out a lot of them teach English. Hmm. Funny that. But a lot of them um, who are English teachers are really passionate about their job. And I think it's a wonderful career option if you are really passionate about what you do and are constantly seeking to improve yourself and the lives of your students. But I just know that for me, it's not really a thing long term. You know, I might be able to do it for a year or two. And then after that, I'll probably be looking for something else to do if it even came down to that. Because I've been looking at a bunch of different options, you know, because like I said, this is my last year at Lakeland. So it's usually around this time where students tend to look for internships, applying to different jobs just to kind of test the waters, see how things are. And that's basically what I've been doing for this week. Just looking and seeing what the job market's like, see what's all out there. And there's definitely a lot of opportunities out there, including within Japan that don't involve English teaching, which is awesome. But the reality is that a lot of the work that I want to do as a video editor, videographer, filmmaker, whatever, involves me leaving Japan. So a lot of the, the major gigs are out in LA and New York, and that's just reality of the situation. So I've decided that I'm gonna give myself a year, and if I can't find something within my liking before I graduate, then I'm gonna move back to America and continue to look for work elsewhere. I've decided that even though as much as I love 
Japan, living in Japan is a completely different animal. And unless I have a job that I'm really passionate about, it's going to be very difficult for me to continue to stay out here. And that's just how it is. So, you know, decided to give myself 365 days to figure my shit out. Well, plus or minus. <laughs> so, that's just how it is. And like I said, I don't really want to leave Japan, but I've decided, you know, I'm going to be getting closer to my 40s than I am my 20s. And, you know, I need to really start taking my career seriously, you know, and I can't just be doing the little freelance gigs here and there and just scraping by enough to uh, pay the bills every month. You know, that lifestyle is getting real old real fast. So I need to find employment elsewhere that will take care of me in the long run. And if I can't find that here in Japan, then I got to look elsewhere. And that's just the reality of the situation. Now, if I do decide to move back to America, does this mean I'll never ever visit Japan ever again? Well, uh, with current circumstances notwithstanding, you know, once borders open up and all that stuff, I definitely do want to be in a position to where I can at least visit Japan on the regular. So I'm thinking more West Coast than East Coast, just to give you all a little hinty hint <laughs> of things. Um, but yeah, man, just uh, a lot of stuff on my mind. And it's not even YouTube related. Well, it is, but it isn't, you know. And speaking of youtube -y stuff, um, I'm in the middle of editing my Enoshima vlog. So I've been really reinvigorated by this vlog, to be honest with you guys. It's really given me that passion and that drive to make videos again. It's something that I lost over the years. You know, when I first went back to America after leaving Japan, and even when I came back to Japan after old Colony Macaroni started happening, and you know, I remained isolated from everybody. You know, just going out, making videos just to make them because it was a nice day and, you know, looked great. So if you guys saw the pictures on Instagram.com slash the Andy San, you'll uh, have an idea of what to expect in that vlog. But yeah, I just decided to make it to not only enter a contest to win a new Sony camera, but also just to challenge myself. A little bit you know because even if i don't win the camera i still want to push myself a bit more as a youtuber vlogger whatever so either way whatever happens you know but it's really reinvigorated my love for making my own videos and between that and also re-uploading um the old andy japandy series on my energy Panty channel. So for those who don't know, I'm re-uploading one episode a week for the next two weeks of the old energy Panty series. And it's gonna be covering the entire year of energy Panty all in one video. So it's gonna be a nice little marathon. And if you guys didn't catch the uh, original energy Panty series when it went down, uh, this will be a nice little, you know, walk through memory lane. And it's going to have, you know, chapters and everything all lined up. So you'll be able to skip ahead to uh, the videos that you want to watch and stuff like that. And this coming Monday will be Monday Japan time, uh, Sunday night, I guess, for y'all out in the Merkajin lands. I'm going to be doing a premiere of the 2014 year of Andy Japandi. And this one is my longest ever because it's just a few minutes shy of eight and a half hours long. It's all the Andy Japan videos from 2014. And that was probably one of my banner years as a creative. Um, I would argue to say that 2015, I started getting into video making a little bit more. But as far as just sheer output, just going out and doing shit, like 2014 was it, man. 
And then the following week, we'll also be doing 2015. And then I want to also put together the videos that I did for 2020 on the Andy Japan channel. What little videos I've done for 2020. So that one's not going to be nearly as long as the other ones. But I still want to put it together. And I want to make this like kind of a, a yearly sort of tradition. So like every year, we'll be putting out a year-long compilation video. And... You know, we're just putting out the first couple right now just to kind of test the waters and, you know, get the stuff out there. Um, especially for the older stuff, it was really nice to look back on a lot of those old videos. You know, like there were some videos with my old division back when I was in the Navy. Um, and just seeing the quality or lack thereof of some of the videos. Um, it's just incredible, man. You know, just really really made me feel very nostalgic, very natsukashi, as the Japanese would say. And also made me think of kind of where my headspace was as a creator, because, you know, back then I wasn't monetized at all. So I just did it strictly for fun and as a way to kind of blow off steam from my job in the Navy. You know, it's just a way for me to get out of the house and to do stuff. And it was definitely something I always look forward to doing, even during the hardest work days when uh, I was stationed at New Kosca. And somewhere along the way, I just kind of lost sight of that, you know? Like I became too obsessed with the numbers, too obsessed with subscribers, view counts, comments, um, revenue, once I got monetized, all that stuff, man. And especially, you know, once you turn 30, that's when you gotta start to take inventory of your life and just kind of look and be like, okay, you know, your 20s, you know, you can largely write that off as just kind of a mulligan decade because, you know, you're just coming into your own as an adult, going through college, sometimes grad school, just kind of experimenting with a lot of different stuff. So, like, you know, if you don't have it figured out in your 20s, that's okay. <laughs> you know, it's just the decade to kind of find yourself and figure out who you are as a human being outside of mommy and daddy's house. And once you turn 30, I originally thought that was kind of the decade where it's like, okay, you kind of figured yourself out as a person, and now it's the time to build, you know, whether that's buy a, ho buy a home, house, <laughs> um, you know, get married, have kids if you haven't already, and uh, just continue to build upon your um, assets, basically. And I guess... You know, I was doing that in my 30s, you know, building upon my educational assets, as well as some financial assets, you know, being a, uh, a freelance video editor and improving my skills there as well. But I feel like it's, you know, kind of time to, you know, really get serious about a career once um, I get done graduating, you know, and just really, you know, lay some groundwork you know, it's it's nice to be able to go off to these different adventures and do stuff, but I want to have a nice, solid home base to fall back on. You know, if the venture doesn't pan out like I expect it to, no big deal. At least I have something to come back home to, basically. And, you know, it's definitely helping to have a good financial base as well because, you know, I've been just kind of living not really living paycheck to paycheck that's not really accurate but you know i just you know just barely getting by sometimes uh, other times it's easier it just depends you know <laughs> that's kind of the uh, the life of the freelancer right you know the feast or famine mentality as i've talked about before you know like when when the videos and the gigs and stuff are coming in like man i am living large but uh when they're not coming in you know, I'm struggling pretty hard. And while that lifestyle can be pretty exciting, it also comes with a lot of stress and anxiety as well. So I'm looking to build up more consistent forms of income. And then, you know, I'm not going to quit doing freelance video editing entirely, but I want to kind of, you know, wrap those up a little bit. And just kind of have that as like a every once in a while sort of thing. Because I think I've 
gotten to the point where, you know, I've been relying on freelance video editing to carry me through for a while now. And while it's able to get me by from month to month, by itself, it's just not a very reliable source of income. And I think I've given it enough time to really develop. So it's not just a, well, I had a couple bad months, so time to give it up. But I think, you know, now, like I said, it's time to you know, really put some money down, start building up some assets. So I think it's, you know, high time for me to return to the, the J-O-B land, as it were, and still continue to do freelancing, but just not to the degree that I had before. And then once I get some financial assets built up and, you know, get a good idea of what I want to do as far as filmmaking and stuff like that goes, then we'll be able to get back into it because, you know, it's, it won't be the end. It'll just be, you know, it won't even end at all. <laughs> you know, it'll just kind of scale down. That's kind of one of the nice things about freelancing is, you know, you can turn it on and turn it off. So, yeah, that's just kind of where my head's at, man. You know, as far as creativity goes, this Enoshima vlog has really reinvigorated a lot of things. It's kind of reinvigorated my love for making my own videos, as well as looking back on the old In Japan vlogs. Um, it's really kind of shaken me out of this creative funk that I've been in for a while now. And I think at this point, especially with all the other stuff going on in my life, um, I never really wanted to be like a super famous YouTuber type person. I know a lot of people think that that was my goal, was to get like a lot of subs and stuff on YouTube. And when I tried to make that my goal, it just became, you know, this unwinnable mission, basically. And I think now I'm at a, a point in my life where I'm okay with not getting a million subs or whatever. If it happens, it happens. It's fucking awesome. But it's not going to be the end of the world for me. You know, I have other things to focus on, you know. And that's always, you know, been the thing that has been good for me, was focusing on my video editing for other people. And as far as my own creative ventures, I want to make them my own. You know, I was too worried about people not watching my stuff. I was too worried about, you know, my videos not being, quote, good enough for whatever reason, whether they're filmed in an interesting style or they don't get like a million views or whatever the case. I was just worried about too many numbers and too many other people's opinions to really consult the one opinion that actually matters. Mine. So I think at this point, I'm just going to continue to do me and continue to make stuff that I want to make. You know, I just, I was worried for too many years about well, what do you guys want to watch? You know, what, what type of videos are you guys interested in? You know, I tried consulting people and, you know, I never really got an answer that was, that I was, uh, totally satisfied with no matter who I talk to it just like it I could tell where, where their intentions were but it just it just didn't feel right to me but this feels right you know just making videos like how I used to make videos not necessarily in the same style with the same equipment mind you but just you know have that passion for making stuff and sharing it with the world and not giving a fuck about if I'm reaching Chris Broad numbers. You know, those aren't my metrics for success. You know, being able to make videos and interact with you guys in the comments, all two or three of you, maybe four if this one pops off, hopefully. <laughs> uh, no, but for real, you know, I, I love talking with you guys, whether it's on live streams, in the comments, on my Discord, which uh, links down below in the boobity boop if you wanna join that. Um, I just love talking with you guys, and that to me was the reason why I even joined YouTube in the first place, going all the way back to 2006, over 15 years ago at this point. Fuck, I'm old. You know, just, it was to connect with other, other people, whether it was other people in the comments, other YouTubers, you know, I just, 
wanted to reach out to other people who are interested in the same stuff that I am. And I'm proud to say that, you know, I've done that. I've been able to reach so many different people and, you know, for some really affect their lives in a positive way. And, you know, that may sound very highfalutin, like, oh, you're tooting your own horn there, Andy San. You know, slow down there, cowboy. But really, you know, like I've, you know, affected so many people. And I don't want to call out those individuals, but, you know, I've helped a lot of people get into, well, Lakeland, for one. I've helped at least four people <laughs> decide on joining Lakeland University of Japan. And, you know, just other random people who watch my videos and whether it's enough to just kind of get them by th during the day or if they just want to watch stuff in Japan whenever I decide to leave my, my room, you know, if, even if it's just a little escapism, you know, it just, it means the world to me that you guys continue to watch and comment, even if it's only like one or two, maybe four of you, you know, just the numbers don't really bother me as much as they used to. And I want to make stuff that I'm proud of and make stuff that I can look back on in a few years and be like, ah, oh, so nostalgic. That's where I was. You know, I had all that hair and oh man, I was so fat back in the day too, you know, <laughs> and whatever. So anyway, I know I've gone on this 20 plus minute rant at this point. So I think we'll end things here. And I just want to say thanks to everybody who's watched my stuff, liked with the thumbs, commented, subscribed, <laughs> commented, commented, subscribed. And I also want to thank you guys for sending a few friends to the party, taking it back old school. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey, guys, Andy here. And today we're going to be talking about YouTube stuff as well as personal life stuff, taking it back old school update style in this little raw vliggity vlog. So I just got done filming a new Andy Talks Japandy episode. So I'll be on the lookout for that coming soon. Really excited about that one. And it's going to be coming out probably either sometime this week or next. So just uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. And as far as this channel goes, I know you guys are probably wondering why I haven't really been uploading too frequently on here. More importantly, why I haven't been live streaming on here in a while. And that's just because, you know, mental health's not in the best of straits right now. And I'm just getting kind of tired of answering the same old questions about the same old people that I've made videos about. And this is getting annoying. You know, just having to deal with people trying to kind of bait me into talking shit about somebody who I don't really give a shit about anymore, to be honest. And, you know, they're the only ones who are talking in my comments at all. So it's like, it's kind of hard because, you know, on one hand, I don't want to ignore my audience. But on the other hand, if this is what I'm given, I don't really want to talk about that stuff. You know, it just doesn't really do me a bit of good. It just makes me kind of come across as bitter. And, you know, I did that before just because I felt it was kind of, you know, fun to poke fun at it. But uh, at this point, I'm just kind of done with uh, the whole situation, the whole drama and everything like that. And, you know, if you guys want to know my full thoughts on the person in question, well, you guys probably already seen the video. It's got like thousands of views at this point. So you all know which one I'm talking about. And you all know who I'm talking about. So, yeah, I think we're just going to keep uh, live streams on hiatus for the time being. Just till I get the upstairs all taken care of and just carry on from there. Now, as far as the Edit by Andy channel goes, I'm really looking forward to making some new content for that channel. I know I've been promising you guys all kinds of content for that channel, but I've been kind of hesitant just because I felt so, um, you know, obligated, I guess, to the other channels, you know, whether it's to the live streaming or, you know, I haven't put out anything on the other channels. And I was like, eh, I should probably put something out, right? And just been feeling kind of guilty 
about that whole thing. But, you know, with putting live stream to bed for the time being, I think it's a good time to uh, really work on, you know, building up a good foundation with the editing channel, putting out some basic tutorials, as well as some other content that I've been promising you guys for a while. And uh, just go from there. You know, just focus on that mostly, building that up, trying to get a, a frequent audience because that's one of the main problems with that channel is that it gets just a lot of passers by, but nobody, no like real dedicated audience for it. So you know, that's something I'm going to be working on building up. So uh, be on the lookout, for more stuff for that channel coming soon. And as far as just um, like freelancing and just YouTube in general, I uh, spent the past five weeks while on break, um, just working, whether it's for you know, my jobs or doing freelance work. I uh, just been working as hard as I can just to keep the uh, the lights on, and myself very gainfully fed. <laughs> I know terrible camera angles, but what you gonna do? Um, and speaking of school, though, um, from earlier, <laughs> good transition, Andy. Uh, I just completed my first week of school back at Lakeland University of Japan, back for the fall semester of 2021. Woo. Doing it online once again. And yeah, feels good to be talking to people again, even if it's just online. You know, it feels good to be interacting with uh, students and stuff like that. Once again, feeling not quite as isolated as I did on break and stuff like that. So I'm going to be looking forward to getting some good grades this semester and carry on smartly with getting my bachelor's at the end of summer semester 2022. Woo. And uh, just carry on from there, man. But I guess the, uh, the main thing I want to talk to you guys about is just kind of, and this is basically what my uh, Andy Talks Japani video is about, which is, you know, what's keeping me here in Japan? You know, what, what sort of long-term goals do I have with living out here in Japan? And for me, it's to set up a career in video production. And I know you might be thinking, well, you know, they don't really have jobs like that out here in Japan. And then like, well, they do, but they don't, you know, as far as, as far as our Baito work goes, I definitely am able to get my fill as far as that goes but as far as um you know visa, visa sponsoring work goes video production there are jobs out there for it but they're pretty hard to come by and a lot of it has to do with network as well as timing and now just ain't the right time basically so you know i've been going out there and just applying to jobs just to kind of see what's out there because you know during this time this is my last year in school and usually most kids, they go and try to get like an internship or something like that with a company and see if they like it. If they do, then they already basically have a job guaranteed for them once they graduate. So it's going to be just an easy transition. And that's something I've been trying to get uh, while out here in Japan. But obviously with uh, what's going on in the world right now, it's a little bit difficult and Plus, you know, my school has just started up the bachelor's program, so they don't have all of the different pieces put into place as far as, you know, networks with companies to do internships and all this other stuff. It's basically, you got to do it on your own. And with a lot of networking events and stuff like that canceled because of the, you know what, it's really hard to get out there and network with people and make friends even on other cases which has also affected my own mental health it's just you know it's hard to get out there and meet people right now because of current circumstances you know a lot of the other ways that i would have met people in the before times would have been you know going out to bars finding like-minded groups going and hanging out there trying to make some friends going to like meet up with like different groups and doing stuff like that and you know, now that's all pretty much gone. You know, there's no in-person groups happening. I mean, probably for the best considering, but uh, it's still still taking a toll on the old uh, head brain, to say the least. And, uh, 
you know, it's just been something that's really hard for me to, uh, to deal with, you know, and, you know, it's one of the reasons why I'm also looking into the possibility of, you know, moving out of Japan, going elsewhere. And it's not something that I know a lot of you want to hear because you just know me as the Japan guy, right? And plus, you know, I've been talking about, you know, wanting to return to Japan for so long once I came back. And now that I'm here, it's, you know, it's just, eh, you know, <laughs> but it's not really Japan's fault. It's just, it just happens, you know, but, you know, I'm just putting some feelers out there right now. Just kind of look and see what's to be seen, what opportunities I have, stuff like that. And we'll just go from there. So I'm not going to make a snap decision anytime soon. Because first and foremost, my main goal is to graduate. So, you know, even if I did decide to leave, I'm not going to leave until I get that paper in my hand. And uh, once I do, well, we'll go from there. But I just wanted to let you guys know that it could be a very real possibility in the uh, in the future that I might just end up leaving Japan, going back to uh, to America, and just carrying on from there. But at least at that point, I'll have my bachelor's degree. So I'll be able to get a job somewhere doing something. And, you know, worst case scenario, you know, I decide to go back to Japan once uh, borders reopen. You know, I'm able to do that and able to get a work visa. So, you know, even if I do decide to go back to America, Japan won't be, you know, a closed opportunity forever. You know, it'll still be there. You know, it was there when I left the first time and it'll be there if I decide to leave again. So I'm not really too hung up on, you know, leaving Japan, stuff like that. And plus, with the uh, the way the community is now, it's like I don't really attach myself to, like, the JVlog community like I did before because I know when I left, pretty much uh, most of, if not all, of the JVloggers that I'd come to know, you know, you know, just distance themselves from me because well, I'm no longer in Japan, so I might as well just be dead. You know, just going back to cheeseburgers and guns land. And it is what it is. I'm not too bitter about it. And plus, at that time, the community was kind of imploding in on itself anyway. So probably for the best that I got out during, you know, the best possible time, I guess, in retrospect. But, you know, for me, uh, as far as YouTube stuff goes, um... You know, I want to focus on other things that are a bit more within my control rather than kind of the reliance that a certain group of people will still be around, which is why I'm focusing more on video editing, you know, shooting, stuff like that. Not only to, you know, help pay the bills, but to build a portfolio and continue on my career in making them bids, you know. And as far as, you know, making my own stuff goes, I think there's just more of a future for me in making stuff about video editing than there is talking about Japan. And that's just the sad reality of the situation is that, you know, it's just with the videos that I make about in Japan, even though I feel a lot more passionate about those things, I know that, you know, they don't really bring in the views or the money. And, you know, I just, I've been hemorrhaging subscribers on that channel for months now and you know people might be thinking well it's a small channel so who gives a shit right well this is a small channel too and even on this channel i'm i have a net gain of subscribers not by much but still a net gain and on the engine panty channel i'm just constantly losing subscribers more than i'm gaining them and it makes hardly any money i might be able to get like one chew eye a month from it maybe <laughs> and that's about it you know not that this channel brings in a whole lot of money mind you but the uh, the lion's share of money definitely comes from the video editing channel and i've been ignoring it for years and years i know there's been a lot of people out there telling me just make fucking tutorials man nobody gives a shit about your life you know well i disagree with that statement you know i definitely do agree that you need to go out and make some more tutorials set up a good stock of content out there so that people can go back to it and watch it because the nice thing about tutorials is that they're pretty much evergreen you know there's not going to be a huge difference in 
how you do a lot of things in Premiere, whether it's, you know, CS6 or CC 2015 versus CC 2021 or 2023 or whenever you're watching this video, greetings, if you're watching the future. You know, a lot of those same basic concepts are gonna remain true no matter what version you're in, unless like a huge shift happens. And at that point, I'll probably already have tutorials out for it again. I'll be able to re-release a whole bunch of new content talking about the new changes. So regardless of what happens, you know, I'll still be able to either be able to make new content or still get views from the older content because you know, that stuff's evergreen, man. And even though I haven't really uploaded to that channel very consistently, it has been pulling in consistent views and has been pulling in consistent money. And it's something that I definitely do want to focus more on, <laughs> more on. Um, but in a lot of ways, I felt guilty about it because it takes time away from making videos that I'm passionate about, whether that's talking with you guys through these personal vlogs or through sharing different parts of Japan, whether it's actually going outside of this room or just talking in here with you guys about my own experiences living out here in Japan. And, you know, those definitely mean the most to me, but, you know, sometimes you just gotta go with what you know, right? And I think, you know, now's a good time to uh, start building up that channel. And this doesn't mean like goodbye to the other channels or anything like that. It just means that I'm not going to be focusing on them as much moving forward. So, you know, you might get a video or two here or there, um, but it's not going to be like a constant weekly, monthly sort of thing. It just, if it happens, it happens, right? And I think that's a pretty healthy attitude for YouTube in general, you know, even though if you want to grow on the, on the platform, it's probably not the best way to go about it. You know, you definitely want to, Put yourself out there but uh you know you just gotta find what what works for you and uh move forward with it and for me that's video editing whether it's for my clients for production companies or for youtube you know that's definitely something that i want to pursue further and to make more content to to help people because that's that's ultimately why i do youtube is not just for documentation of of my own life but uh also help people and I feel like that's really important to me you know whether it's helped them get through a really rough time in their life you know I've had so many people talk to me about you know how my videos help them you know get the courage to come out to Japan or you know go and try something else new in their lives and even though I'm just a in the eyes of many a small nothing youtuber that nobody talks about you know to me just hearing a couple of those stories just makes it all worth it you know it just you know makes all the comments and the hard work and all that stuff worth it no matter how big of a check google throws in front of me or whatever you know just hearing stories from you guys about stuff like that is that's why i do youtube you know it is nice to get that paycheck every couple months but those are the stories that really make it worthwhile. And, you know, with helping people get into video editing and being able to get more people on the platform and show them that it's, you know, not as hard as you might think it is and that it is very doable. And to, you know, later, you know, once, you know, once I actually gain the courage, I guess, to make stuff that's not just tutorials, um, I also want to talk more about just the video making process and freelancing because freelancing is very important to me as well. You know, because freelancing has allowed me to not have to work a non video production type job for, I don't know what, a, like about two, three years at this point. I haven't worked a, a non video related job, you know. Like I said, I've done free work, freelance work since 2015, but that's just been on the side. You know, I've worked other jobs as well. And this one definitely gives me the most satisfaction. It allows me to work for, from wherever I am in the world. So this whole stuff going around actually, it, s it sounds really bad. And I, I trust me, I don't mean it to sound bad, but it has actually benefited me in a lot of ways. And that it's allowed me to work from home 
rather than get on the train and go into a studio or wherever where I'm just kind of under the gun as far as putting stuff together and I can just sit here, drink my little cup of coffee, put together videos and uh, still do good things, you know? So, and speaking of coffee, I think this one's about ready to hit the Brown Town station, if you all know what I mean. So, I'm gonna have to end things here. So, I just wanna thank you guys for all the support over the years. Uh, whether it's here on discord twitter instagram wherever <laughs> i guess the real question is where am i not right uh, i just want to thank you guys for all the support and giving this uh alleged nothing youtuber um much love and i want to give that back as much as i can so with all that said this is andy sign up for now as always forever we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye Oof. Gotta get, get this going. Alright, bye. Hey guys, Andy here. And we need to talk about what's gonna be going on with me on YouTube moving forward. So I've decided to make some major changes to things in order for me to better work on other things. And the three main changes that are gonna be going on are that I've deleted my Discord server and that I'm gonna be effectively going on hiatus on my Andy channel and my Andy Japandy channel as well. And there isn't any one particular reason behind doing any of those things. It wasn't a particular event or a comment or a message or anything like that. It's just been just a, a culmination of a bunch of different things that have been happening that I've decided to just kind of put those projects to rest for the time being. And it's ultimately so that way I can work on other projects like my Edit by Andy channel, as well as getting into the crypto space, selling NFTs, as well as other IRL stuff, you know, like school and jobs and all that kind of fun grown-up stuff so I just wanted to make this video to tell you guys what's gonna be going on so basically not gonna be uploading anything more on my Andy channel or my Andy Japandy channel for the time being um, don't expect any like <laughs> uploads in the very near future if at all at this point, I just don't know if I'm going to come back to those channels. If I do, it's going to be a once in a great while sort of thing. But as it stands right now, there's not going to be any consistent streams of content on those channels. Not that there was any, to be honest. But I just want to make that patently obvious. So you guys aren't wondering, well, what happened to the old Andy Sand? You know, where is he at? I thought he's making videos or something, you know? And, you know, I'm just going to be focusing more on other stuff. Now, with the Edit by Andy channel, yes, I am going to be making some more tutorials for that channel. But I'm also going to be working on other forms of content for that channel as well. I'm going to be experimenting and see what does really well and see if it fits into that niche. Uh, some things I've been thinking about doing is doing, uh, like, unboxings and getting more reviews on that channel when possible. I mean, I don't have a huge amount of money, so I can't be like a proper tech channel and just, you know, get review gear all the time. So it's not gonna be a consistent thing as far as that sorts of content goes. Uh, but I'm also looking at getting into other things like uh, doing video breakdowns to kind of show you what makes this video good or in some cases bad you know areas to improve upon areas to take note of stuff like that that's something i've been wanting to do for a long time now and i've been talking about it for a while but you know the reason why i haven't really done any of those things is that i've been focusing too much on other stuff like my discord server and the two channels that I had mentioned earlier. So that's 
even though I said, you know, there's no really one main reason that I decided to do it, but that's, you know, kind of one of the reasons why I decided to do it is so that way I can focus on those things because I knew, I know that um, I really haven't been doing a good job trying to build that channel up. And despite that, it's done extremely well. It's earned the lion's share of income on AdSense, which isn't much, you know, it's not enough to live off of or anything like that. But uh, I feel if I can continue to work on that channel, build up the content, start making stuff for it regularly, then it definitely does have a potential to really do some good things. And then as far as the NFTs go, that's a new venture that I'm going to be working on in uh, the coming weeks, not sooner. And I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm going to be selling off some of my pictures that I've done over the years as NFTs. I've been looking into different sites, just learning more about kind of the mechanics of what making NFTs are about. Just kind of the reason, like, why would anybody buy something like that? And, you know, I've been talking with uh, some of my friends who are in the scene a bit more than I am just to kind of get more of a down and dirty look at as far as what that all entails. And to, to be honest, it's really intriguing. Now, I'm not really expecting to make a whole heck of a lot of money from it, but it definitely does have the potential to make a whole lot of money if, you know, things work out. But even if things don't work out, really, it's I'm looking at it more as as a learning experience. So even if I don't sell anything or only sell like one thing, then at least, you know, I have the, the knowledge and experience to say that, you know, I tried doing that on the, you know, the NFT scene. So if it evolves or changes into something else, then, you know, I'll be able to better adapt to whatever that other thing is. You know, it's kind of like with the social media, right? You know, there's people who start off on Vine and then when Vine died, they moved over to like Instagram or YouTube or whatever. And, you know, they took their skills that they learned from Vine moved them over there. Some even moved, you know, to TikTok, which is in a lot of ways, a spiritual successor to Vine, but I digress. So those are the types of things I'm going to be doing moving forward as far as on the internet type stuff. But also just from a personal perspective, I know that there's a lot of things in my life that have been grossly ignored by me just because of my poor management of time. And I definitely want to, to work on those things, you know, namely learning Japanese or just getting the fuck out of the house every once in a while. I actually looked, I have an app on my phone that tracks um, like your spending usages on your IC card. And I noticed that I hadn't like gotten on the train in months, really. I've just been sticking around my local area. And it was just kind of a, fuck, that's kind of depressing, you know, it's like, I just stay either in my room or just kind of walk around my local neighborhood and that's about it really. You know, it's just like, fuck, I got to get out of the house a bit more often. <laughs> and I know some of you guys have been saying that too. So, you know, with, with less stuff to, to worry about, you know, I think I'm definitely going to be able to take care of some stuff in the IRL as well. You know, I just been spending too much of my time and just mental energy working on, Oh, I got to, update you guys on something else or I got to put out this any Japani video or you know what's going on in the discord server and you know just a bunch of other stuff that you know my time would be even though it's going to say bad but it's like you know from a certain perspective it's like my time would be better served if I were to focus more of that energy on other things not to say those things were unimportant but they just you know it comes to a point where you have to really look at the opportunity cost of where you spend your time and your energy. And for some things, it's definitely worth it to invest that energy into because you can start to build it and make it really mean something. Or if it's just like a fun little hobby that you have and you know it's a good way to blow off steam, then great. You know, just kind of know that going into things. But with me wanting to do a bunch of other things and just being like hella ambitious, but you know, I only have so much time, so much energy, you know, I got to look at where I can uh, best optimize things and that's where I'm at right now. So 
I just want to say thanks to everybody who was on my Discord server and for those who have subscribed to my channels over the years, did the, uh, the liking with the thumbs or rated with the stars for you old school followers. And yeah, just want to say thanks, you know. I wish I could have held out a bit longer, but it is what it is. And you know, before we go, I do want to say that while this is the end for now, I think deep down, if it was really truly positively the end, then I would have just killed off the channels, you know. But I just don't think I have the heart to uh, completely kill off those sorts of things, you know. So I think I will be back at some point, but it's not going to be in the near future. So I just want to keep the door open. So if I make a video sometime in the future and you're like, oh, shoot, he's back. I thought you said he's never going to come back. So leave the door open, but I'm not going to be back anytime soon. I'm going to say that. So, all right, before, before I get too much on a tirade and make a whole nother video coming back to the channel, uh, we'll just sign the things off here. So with all that said, guys, one more time for old time's sake, this is Andy also known as the Andy Son, signing for now. And as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Goodbye. Hey, guys. Andy here. And I didn't think I'd be making another video on this channel so soon. I figured it was going to be months down the way before I picked up the camera again to talk about some things. But here we are, once again, on the cell phone. And I just want to talk to you guys about the features of this channel, as well as the Andy Japandi channel. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Oh, great. He's going to come back to YouTube, and it's going to be the same shit all over again, right? Well, truth is, I've thought a lot about me giving up on those two channels and had some time to really think about it and I've decided to leave the door open for me to make videos on those channels but with a caveat that it's not going to be under any sort of regular schedule not that I had one to begin with but I want to make videos not because I have to because oh it's been a week it's been two weeks it's been a month it's been two months so I better crank out a video right I don't want to make videos because I have to I want to make videos because I choose to so just to recap I'm gonna be keeping the door open to making videos for this channel as well as the Andy Japan channel, but it's not going to be any sort of regular schedule, basically. So, if you guys are okay with that, then I'd appreciate it if you did all the YouTube shtick that every YouTuber has to say. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos eventually, right? So, I also want to talk about. Um, just the outpouring of comments, both good and bad, about my leaving those channels. And we'll get to the good stuff first, because I, I talk so much about the bad stuff that I really don't give enough credit to the positive influences in my comment section that are there through thick and thin. And... I, I can't thank you guys enough. You know, you guys are the reason that I want to continue making videos. And you're the reason why I even decided to uh, keep the door open for the possibility of me making videos for those channels. Albeit at a very whenever schedule. Um, I just can't th say thanks enough for that. However, there has been a contingent of negativity that's been going on on my channels for a while now that's just been 
boiling over recently. And it's one of the major contributing factors to why I decided to kind of get out of making videos for those channels. And it's largely derived from some groups on Reddit giving me shit and some other people as well elsewhere on the, uh, the interwebs. And, you know, I've been on the internet for a long time. You know, I, I've seen a lot of shit talked about me and stuff. And even though I'm nobody really all that special, you know, I'm like my, my channel, this channel in particular hasn't even broken 2000 subscribers. I've had it for over 15 years now. And, you know, I've seen a lot of hateful rhetoric coming my way. And, you know, the stuff that I've seen recently has just been from groups who think they know who I am and, you know, try to write a narrative about how much how I'm a just complete fucking screw up and all this, that, and the other. And they're trying to give me just unwarranted criticism, mostly about my weight, which it's my own fucking problem, really. Like, you don't have to fucking live in my meat suit. So, you know, worry about your own shit. Mind your business. But I know that's not how the internet works. So you get some of these chuckleheads popping up in the comments from time to time. And you might be wondering, well, where are these comments? Where have they gone? And let's just say that I take really good care of my comment section because... You know, I want you guys to have a good user experience. You know, I don't want you to, you know, come into one of my videos and you just see a whole bunch of hateful comments and stuff out there but about a bunch of ignorant bullshit. You know, that's not something I want to, to perpetuate in the world. And... Some people may think, well, you know, you got to have a thick skin, man. You got to have a thick skin to deal with, with shit online, right? You know, you can't be a, a, a sissy, you know? And I delete those comments not because I can't take it, but because I just don't want that in my comment section, you know? The audience who's actually there for me doesn't want that shit either. And it literally, it literally is shit. It's like saying, just, you know, walking in with your shoes on, being old Mr. Merkigen, and they're just covered in shit, and they're dragging shit all over the uh, the floor and onto the carpet and all those kinds of stuff. And I'm yelling, "And what are you doing, dragging all this shit in my house?" Like, "Oh, you can't take a bunch of shit in your house, oh, you fucking bitch! Clean this shit up. Oh, you can't. Don't be a bitch. Take all this shit in your house." It's the same shit, literally. <laughs> I just wanted to say shit a little bit, so thanks for indulging me, but. The statement rings true. You know, I just want to keep things nice and clean in the comment section so y'all don't have to deal with them fucking chuckleheads. And it's just on me. So, I do my best to keep the uh, comment sections clean, but every once in a while they sneak in. And, you know, like I said, I've dealt with a lot of that stuff being, as, being online for as long as I have been. And, you know, every once in a while, a comment kind of sneaks in and, and gets me. You know, I've seen a lot recently talking about of, you know, a lot of different issues that I supposedly have. And just, like I said, spinning this narrative about my life that, you know, they think is true or that fits their own narrative, you know. And they try to give me a bunch of seemingly constructive criticism, but... It's just in bad faith, so I can't take anything that they see say seriously, you know. Don't exactly want to get life advice from someone on a Reddit, subreddit, you know. So, <laughs> it's people who are successful in life aren't exactly browsing Reddit, you know, dispensing nuggets of wisdom. So, yeah. 
And you know, my videos have just been getting dislike bombed like crazy. This one's probably gonna get dislike bombed too, to be honest with you guys. So if you guys are wondering what that is, it's what it is. But it's just been really weighing on me for the past while now. And I had to to divest myself from those those places in order to get some semblance of sanity, really. You know, like I've just completely divested myself from, you know, those like Japanese themed uh, subreddits because it's mostly just a lot of salty gaijin, you know, living in deadbed marriages who, you know, are living very unsatisfying lives and they just want to take that shit out on everybody else. And I know that because, you know, I, I feel that that same pain too. You know, like there's a lot of things in my own life that I'm not happy with, even though there's also a lot of things that I am happy with. So there's always that that feeling of getting pulled into that direction of just lashing out at everybody and, you know, just really going for the jugular, that kind of shit. But I don't want to get caught up in that because it's fucking loser mentality, you know? I just want to deal with that shit. But it is a reality of being someone on the internet, you know? You gotta do with people just simply not liking who you are and the kind of stuff you make, and that's just the reality of it. Can't please everyone all the time. And if these so-called Japan experts just aren't that into my content, that's cool. Feel free to unsubscribe. There's plenty of other YouTubers out there other than me, man. It's ain't 2006 when there's only like 100 of them. Like there's millions, tens of thousands of millions of channels out there you could be watching if you're not digging my stuff. But... It is what it is, you know, can't, you know, just is what it is. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Sorry, this video is, uh, is all over the place. I'm just, it's late, well late by my standards. And we be heading to bed soon, so I'm just kind of in a chillax mood. But I just wanted to come on here and... You know, just make a video to let you guys know what's going on. You know, I still do feel strongly about the Edit by Andy channel and just the overall direction of everything, including the basic disillusion of the whole the Andy San theming. Um, it was really hard to say goodbye to to all that, especially since I've had that name for. You know, if you really want to go back. I've had it since like 2004. I think it was one of the first documented usages of that name was on like a message board. And you know, I've had it on YouTube since the beginning, 2006. And to say goodbye to something like that with, with that much legacy was, was definitely hard. But, you know, a lot can change from when you're just a 20 year old kid, freshly dropped out of college in the midst of a global recession not knowing what the fuck to do with your life to being in your mid-30s going back to school and gonna be graduating in uh, August of next year so to finally see a dream that's taken you almost two decades at this point to complete come to fruition you know definitely puts a lot of things in perspective so, yep, still going to be focused on, on that, and that branding. But, like I said earlier, I do want to leave the door open for making content on this channel as well as the Andy Japandy channel. Just not on a regular basis. So, yeah, that's all I got to say for tonight. Other than, thank you guys for, uh, for all the support. Over the years, I know I wasn't the easiest guy to like. <laughs> I've had my moments, for sure. But, yeah, I just want to say thanks for everyone sticking with me. And for the haters, fuck you. 
Bye. All right. Good night, guys. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang. Andy here. Welcome back to another video on this channel. And before we get into the nitty gritty of things, I just want to say thanks to everybody who's reached out to me. I, I received so many uh, personal messages, DMs, and all kinds of support from you guys. And that means the world to me. You know, you're the reason why I continue to make videos, to see you guys in the comments and interact with you and stuff like that. To know that there's other people out there who really genuinely care about you, definitely makes the guy feel loved, for sure. So, I wanna say first and foremost, thanks for all the support. And before we continue, I do wanna say that my mental health is a lot better than it was when I decided to step away from this channel as well as my Andy Japandi channel. You know, it felt really good to take that break from YouTube, really get my priorities in order. And I also got some new equipment as well. If you didn't notice, I got a new Shure MV7 mic. And it's basically like a USB version of the uh, SM7B that you see in a lot of podcasts and stuff like that. We're gonna be using this for a lot of video editing tutorials and some on-camera stuff as well. But as far as the break from YouTube goes, like I said, definitely felt good to step away, get my priorities in order, and uh, move forward with a new plan. And I know there's gonna be a lot of people here who are disappointed that I'm not gonna be continuing to do Japan-related videos or to come on here and live stream and do stuff like that. I did leave the door open for me to make videos just on a non-regular basis. You know, it's not gonna be a case of, well, it's been a few weeks or a month or so since I last made a video, so uh, better crank one out, right? It's gonna be a case of me wanting to make videos, which is something that I lost along the way. For me, YouTube was always about having fun. You know, whether it was just fun talking with you guys, fun making videos, fun sharing experiences with everybody out there, especially fellow YouTubers. I let a lot of meaningless numbers get in the way of that. Feeling like because I only have less than 2,000 subscribers on this channel or on my other Andy Japandi channel, I only get like maybe a couple views that those channels are massive failures. I, I just let a lot of people kind of get in my head and dictate how to run things. You know, taking this break, taking a step back from everything really helped me put into perspective that to me it was never about the numbers. It was always about having fun and talking with people. And I lost sight of that. And for that, I'm sorry. You know, that's what helped me, you know, come to terms with coming back to YouTube was doing it for the right reasons, not doing it just to make a few shekels here and there. As far as the status of this channel, as well as the Andy Japandi channel, I'm not shutting the channels down or anything like that. I initially thought about doing that because I was just in such a, a state, I was like, I'm just, I'm fucking done. But uh, after having some time to think about it, I decided not to do that and to instead just come on here and make videos whenever. Do them because I want to, not because I have to. And I decided also to shift the majority of my focus to the channel of mine that's doing the best, even though I haven't really been doing much of anything with it. And that is my Edit by Andy video editing tutorial channel. Although we are gonna be incorporating some new content on there in addition to video editing tutorials, but I knew I needed to take a break from all things YouTube just to get everything right upstairs before I even attempted anything else YouTube related. So if you guys are interested in learning about Adobe Premiere Pro and just kind of geeking out about uh, video editing stuff, you can check me out on youtube.com slash edit by Andy. And we're also gonna be rolling out some new logos and stuff like that. I'm really, really excited. And as far as other elements of my own life, I've just been, playing some video games for the first time in a while. 
Um, as you guys know, I bought a Nintendo Switch as a graduation present to myself when I graduated Lakeland for the first time around with my associates. You know, I haven't really played it a whole lot before, but since taking the break on from YouTube, picked it up, I'm playing a lot of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh for the Switch. I used to play the, the card game and some of the video games back in the day, but just kind of fell out of it. You know, I bought it for the Switch and I'm like, man, it takes me back to uh, study hall back in the early 2000s. And I'd flip up my Game Boy Advance and play like, you know, Legend of the Duelist or tournament games that came out. So feeling good about that. And then school stuff, we're coming up on midterms this month. So gonna be a little busy with that. Although it is a much easier schedule this time around versus my other semesters. Uh, I don't know if it's just because of my classes or if they're trying something new, but they're spreading out the midterms. So we basically will have like one for one class one week and then two the next week and then another one the following week. So it'll be a bit more spread out, which is good. I won't be stressing as much about midterms. This is my senior year at Lakeland. <laughs> it feels like it's been a long time coming because, well, it has. It just doesn't seem real to me that this is, you know, the home stretch of me finally getting my bachelor's degree. I'm set to graduate at the, um, the beginning or end of August of 2022. I don't have the exact date set yet, but it'll be around that time. And from there, we'll see where things go. I know I've talked a lot about the possibility of moving out of Japan. I know I kind of scared some of you guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> but it is something that I am looking into, uh, especially considering where the job markets are right now for both Japan and America. And especially with a bachelor's degree, I feel like I'll have a lot more options available to me in both countries. Um, Japan especially because I won't have to worry about the whole work visa thing. You know, that was my main hindrance in coming to Japan before because like nobody's giving out work visas on an associate's degree or on a high school diploma for sure. But with a bachelor's degree, it's no problem. And a lot of companies are gonna be a lot less hesitant to, to hire me. But as far as what I'll be doing when, uh, when the time comes, you know, for me, I would prefer to stay within video editing because it's, uh, it's what I'm good at, it's what I love to do, and I'm already doing so much video editing work at uh, my part-time jobs here in Japan. I really like it, you know, and I want to, to move up to a full-time position or find some other company out here who's looking for a video editor, social media person, you may not think that there's a lot of companies hiring for something like that, but if you take a look around, you'd be surprised. I was certainly surprised. I thought for sure I'd have to move back to States to find even an inkling of work like that. But yeah, Japanese companies are catching on that, hey, this whole SNS, which is what they call it out here, is uh, it's kind of a thing and it helps them uh, sell stuff. So they're hiring people to, uh, to put together content for them. Knowing a little bit of that Nihongo certainly helps for sure. We'll just see where things go. You know, I'm keeping my options open. Uh, for me personally, I would definitely prefer to stay in Japan. With Japan, I can, you know, live still pretty comfortably even if I'm not making a whole lot of money. If I do decide to stay here in Japan, definitely gonna be moving into a proper apartment once I get a job and stuff all lined up. If uh, things don't pan out in uh, Japan, in the States, I'll have bachelor's degree so I'll be a lot more marketable and if I ever get the itch to come back to Japan again then it'll be a lot easier for me to get a work visa even if I do decide to leave Japan it may not be the end so just uh just keep that in mind you know like it wasn't the end for me when uh I got out of the navy and went back to America right so with that said guys this is Andy it's not for now as always forever we'll see you next time Catch you later, guys. Bye. Oh, fuck. <laughs> hey, guys. Andy here. And 
I've been getting a lot of hate online from my videos for the past several months now. And while it's easy to say, hey, just ignore the haters, or hey, getting haters is the first sign that you're succeeding. After a while, just me making videos just stops being fun. And if you guys haven't noticed, I really haven't been putting any effort into my recent videos because why bother if all I'm gonna get is just a bunch of hateful, ignorant shit? Or just more anonymous, salty Japan expats hiding safely behind their keyboards saying that my very presence in Japan is making the expat community look bad and I should just move back to America and give up. Thankfully, many of the more egregious comments get picked up by the YouTube autoflag system, so no one but me has to see them as I hit delete. But that doesn't stop them from spreading their effluvia elsewhere online, like on Reddit. I've been a digital content creator going as far back as 2004, when I made my first GeoCities website to track Yu-Gi-Oh wins and losses at my local card shop back in Ohio. I know that getting hated online is a hard part about the job, especially when you put yourself out there for only your deepest insecurities to be spotlighted by haters. I've been called far worse online over the years, and while I've been able to withstand it before, it's worn me down to where I just want to shut everything off. And I mean everything. But I know if I do that, the haters win. They'll rejoice in their victory hymn of, and nothing of value was lost move on to the new shiny toy for them to do with what they will. I have to sit here and ask myself, nothing of value? The odds of just being a fucking human being are 400 trillion to one. So even if, theoretically let's say, I am the worst most garbage human being to ever have humaned in the history of humans, the fact that I'm even human to begin with is an astonishing win in and of itself and every little win there just makes the odds even more astronomically astounding. That being said, the only thing I can do now is, well, the same thing I've been doing for nearly 20 years at this point, and that's keep creating. Keep creating when I'm sad, keep creating when I'm happy, keep creating when I win, and to keep creating when I lose. Because it's not just about me, it's about my audience too. Ego aside, I know there's a lot of people out there who've watched my videos and have been inspired to do something in their lives, whether it's to join the military, or go to Japan to study abroad, or start making content of their own. So, to my supporters, I say thank you, and to my haters, I say thank you. Without the both of you, I wouldn't be where I am today. And with that said, guys, this is Andy, signing for now, and as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Hey guys, Andy here, and today I want to give y'all a little uppy date on the state of me, Andy, because this is Andy Talks Andy, gosh darn it. So anyway, I just wanted to, first and foremost, thank you guys for all the support from the previous video. I uh, definitely got a lot of positive comments, not just on YouTube, but elsewhere on the internet. So I just want to say thanks for all that. Definitely makes a guy feel loved. Before we get into the real meat and potatoes of things, I just want to address uh, some misconceptions that I saw in the comments. So one of the big ones is that I'm not putting enough effort into getting my degree if I'm making all these gold earned YouTube videos. And I should just quit the whole thing and just focus on getting the degree because, you know, I'm not making dick online. And while there's some elements of truth to that, since coming to Japan, I've never had YouTube or freelancing get in the way of things. And as you guys know, I've had to end some very public relationships thanks to my wanting to put my degree and my education ahead of making videos for other people. And I've had a 3.0 GPA ever since coming out to Japan and even earlier than that when I was still back in America too. So you don't have to worry about me making YouTube videos like affecting my career or my uh, education or anything like that. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I'm here on a student visa. So I'm here to get that edumacations and making YouTube videos is just a hobby for me. Still getting that bread, still getting that money, still getting that degree, cause pan getto daze. And uh, that's another thing that I want to clear up is the fact that a lot of people 
seem to think that uh, my videos are very sad, very depressing. And not gonna lie, they've been pretty sad and depressing lately because of circumstances. Been hard to try to get my footing in things, and I've been spending a lot of my time online just because we haven't had much IRL social interactions. And it's really been fucking with the old head brain, to say the least. You know, that just leads to uh, old Andy being a little sad sometimes and drowning my sorrows with some uh, social lubrication. So you just have to deal with that. And um, I've also seen some stuff in the comments talking about um, low effort editing and stuff like that, especially in, in uh, on this channel, which I definitely agree. <laughs> the editing is little too non-existent on this channel. And that's by design, just because again, because I put so much effort into school, I don't want to have to spend like hours or days putting into a project on this channel just because I want it to get out in a timely manner and then I can just move on to either the next video or a freelance project or you know school stuff there's also some comments saying that you know if potential clients saw this channel then they would like fire me on the spot and shit like that and I think it's a bit extreme you know like knock on wood because I actually have that for my desk now uh, but my clients have actually been very supportive, even of this channel, because, you know, of the consistency of my uploads. I know, I know, stop laughing. <laughs> but I guess comparatively, I'm pretty consistent. But for those who don't know, I have two other channels aside from this one. We have my Edit by Andy channel, which goes over uh, video editing tutorials, as well as talking about subjects involving freelancing and other such YouTube musings. So you can find that on, get ready for this, youtube.com slash edit by Andy. That's E-D-I-T-B-Y-A-N-D-Y dot com. And then for the second of my two other channels, it's Andy Japandi which is my Japan-themed channel where all my Japan-themed content goes, okay? So if you're looking for Japan-themed content on this channel, I mean, obviously, if you go through the archives, you'll get it, but as far as, like, recent-ish stuff, eh, it's kind of hit or miss. But if you want, like, Japan-exclusive stuff, then go to, get this, youtube.com slash andy japandi that's a-n-d-y j-a-p-a-n d-y dot com hopefully you guys got all that and you're not all confused by all the rebranding and the channels changing and all this other stuff and i'll definitely be putting links in the description and we'll be putting links to videos on this channel in playlists as well as in the channels tab so if you're ever confused it'll be there okay there's no need to go through life all confused but anyway <laughs> enough of all that shit so i got a couple of fantastic suggestions that i have listed up here uh, we have some street walking videos here in the japan which would be better suited for the Andy Japandi channel. I definitely do like the idea of street walking videos and as things are starting to get a little better with the uh, you know what, not going around as much, fingers crossed, knock on wood, and uh, borders starting to open, open up and just life starting to get back to the before times, back in 2019. <laughs> I'm feeling a lot more comfortable with making videos outside in Japan. In case if you guys don't know where that is, that's where I live, in Japan, outside. But I definitely do like the idea about street walking videos, a lot of different places that I could go. Uh, the one thing I need for my gear in order to really make it good looking 
would be a gimbal or some sort of like fly cam stabilizer. And I actually have one in the, uh, the Amazon cart that I'm gonna be buying as soon as my next paycheck comes in because uh, <laughs> that, uh, that lens that I bought recently didn't come cheap. So come next month, I'll be uh, buying that stabilizer and uh, I'll also be off for a month. I won't have to worry about school. I can uh, pick up some more freelance gigs and in the meantime, just get out there and uh, start making them videos. You know what I'm saying? And then another idea that I got was uh, interviewing veterans who studied abroad on the GI Bill. And I actually know a few. That's another possibility, but obviously I have to schedule something because like, I don't know what their schedule is. So that's something I have to schedule and then I got to script it out. So that's gonna be more thought out content rather than just me coming in here, just talking about shit. And as far as what channel to put it on, probably gonna go on the Andy Japandi channel just because it's Japan themed. And I already have a lot of GI Bill themed content on that channel anyway, as it relates to, uh, to studying abroad, because that's how I'm able to study abroad is uh, through the GI Bill. So as far as updates go, I really wish I, I could tell you guys what's all going on, because there's a lot of good stuff going on. A lot of positive stuff, a lot of not sad video, mopey, fat and gross, Andy sand, sad, depressing shit going on. A lot of good stuff going on. One of the things that's going on that's very good, some opportunities at my school with uh, making videos and doing digital marketing and things like that. So I can't say for certain just yet because again, this is all very in the works, but I can say good things are on the horizon once I get a clear picture of what's going on. You know me, I'll be the first to tell you. But that's all we're gonna have for today, guys. So with that said, this is Andy signing off for now. And as always, forever, see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey guys, Andy here, and today is my 36th birthday, Sanju Rokusai in Japanese. I have some stuff to talk to you guys about, some updates and things like that. Let's go over grades for this semester, the fall 2021 semester at Lakeland University of Japan. Uh, so for this semester, I got three, count of three, A's, and one AB, which is uh, their version of like an A minus or a B plus, somewhere in that range. So yeah, this is academically speaking, my best semester yet and I'm feeling really good about it. Yeah, so I have a month off in between for the holidays and I'm just gonna be working, doing video editing and uh, just relaxing as best I can <laughs> anyway during these times. Next on the docket, let's talk about Andy Japandi. If you haven't seen from the recent um, deluge of videos that have been coming out, I've decided to move the stuff on the Andy Japandi channel over to this channel and also rebrand the channel as Andy Japandi. And there's several reasons behind this. During the semesters um, when I was in school, it was really hard to balance both channels. And I felt like, you know, if I was making content on this channel and if I was talking more about Japan, I'd feel like I was leaving the Andrew Japanese channel high and dry while trying to prop this channel up. And it just kind of became blah, basically. <laughs> I decided to merge the two channels together and moving forward, we'll have more of a Japan focus on this channel, uh, as well as a couple other extra things here and there, but primarily Japan stuff, hence the rebrand of the channel. Consequently, I'm going to be moving not all of the Andy Japan stuff. I'm going to be leaving out a lot of like the update videos and stuff like that, except for a few key ones. Uh, but the majority of the content is going to be moving over to this channel. And once everything's all moved over and got all the titles, tags, and stuff like that taken care of, then uh, we'll be deleting the old Andy Japandi channel. As far as new Andy Japandi content, well, I'm going to be saving some of that for after all the re-uploads and stuff concur, which should be around 
Christmas, maybe a little before if uh, I calculated that all right. So once that's all said and done, then we'll begin work on some new Andy Japandi content. I have a whole bunch of ideas for stuff that I want to make out there. And plus, my school is going to be going back to in-person classes next semester. So I'll have a reason to actually like go into Tokyo and make stuff. So it'll be like how Andy Japandi was at the beginning of 2020, where I would just have my camera with me and I would just make a video in between classes. Um, I think that's a, a really good strategy. It just kind of helps with uh, not being lazy and just sitting in my room ordering Uber Eats all the freaking time. <laughs> so let's talk about the elephant in the room. And that is my mental health. So I've been trying to put out videos for a while, but I couldn't quite get the words out right. And I just felt that it came across a little too mean spirited just because I was just in a really bad place mentally because of, you know, near the end of the semester, I was just really stressed out, trying to get all the projects and stuff done, trying to get everything all sorted. And now that that's all done, I can just kind of bask in the glow and sit at home playing Pokemon and doing whatever. Yeah, this last semester wasn't really a good time for me mentally. I had basically just let a lot of people into my head. Really wasn't worth it, you know? It's never worth it to let the opinions of others uh, dictate how you do things. I just got really down on myself. I was just in a bad place, basically. <laughs> and I just want to apologize for worrying some of you. I know I got some uh, messages from some people asking like how I was doing and, and stuff like that. Uh, thankfully, I'm okay, but uh, you know, it was, it was pretty rough goings there for, uh, for some of it. With the change in direction for this channel, as well as other things in my life, I think uh, we're going to see a turn for the better. I want to showcase some more content, get back to doing what I love instead of just moping around the house all the freaking time. <laughs> and since I'll be going back to school in person, kind of have no choice but to get out of the house, right? I only have two more semesters before I graduate with my bachelor's from Lakeland University of Japan. I'm going to be one of the first, if not the first, American student to graduate from Lakeland University of Japan with a bachelor's degree. From there, uh, we'll see what the future holds. I'm keeping my options open. I would prefer to stay in Japan, but I also know that there's a lot of other opportunities out in the world, so I don't want to discount that as well. But in the meantime, I'm going to be focused on editing some stuff for other people, as well as uh, making my own stuff when I can. And really excited to uh, be taking you guys on this journey. It's, it's feeling really good. I feel like uh, Andy Japan 2022 is not going to be like Andy Japan 2021. All four or five videos that I made during that time. Ugh, it was a little rough, but we're turning a corner. Things are going to get better. Promise. <laughs> so with that said, guys, this is Andy. Snyder for now, as always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey guys, Andy here, and Merry Christmas to all who celebrate it. And to everybody else, happy Saturday. So, that said, I wanted to make this little uppy date vlog for y'all to let you know what's gonna be happening moving forward into 2022. Woo! As well as talk about some stuff that happened this year, 2021. So that said, let's get into it. And the first thing that I want to talk about is the fact that we've uploaded all of the old videos from the previous Andy Japandi channel onto this one. So you're not going to be getting the re-upload barrage that you've been getting for the past couple of weeks now. I've learned my lessons from previous channel migrations that instead of just doing a mass re-upload, it's best to kind of space things out to let the, the videos breathe and stuff like that. So I am kind of glad that I did it this way. And it kind of worked out for Christmas season too, because this is like the main time that a lot of YouTubers upload stuff anyway. So all's well and ends well, right? And I'm glad that you guys have been very receptive to those videos as well. Well, most of them anyway. 
<laughs> but I digress. Hey guys, Editor Andy here, and I just realized after tearing everything down and looking through all the footage, I forgot to mention something. So I'm going to be relaunching my Discord channel. So be sure to click the link in the description down below in the boopity boops, as well as pinned in the comments and sign up for my channel. And if you're keen on earning some Patreon rewards, be sure to sign up for my Patreon for early access among other rewards. So anyway, back to the video. Moving forward, it's going to be new content, but we are going to be taking a break until 2022 just to you know recharge the batteries get some semblance of a holiday vacation during this time and i have a whole bunch of ideas for the angie Panty channel as well as my video editing channel edited by andy i've kind of neglected that channel for the past couple months now just because of schedule and all sorts of stuff cropping up but looking forward to be making some of them quality video editing tutorials, as well as talking about a freelance experience on that channel as well. But as for this channel, I'm really looking forward to also be able to go outside, touch some grass, if you will, and record uh, more videos outside. To also kind of delve more into the personal side of things, which this is one of them update videos where they all kind of intermingle with each other, basically. Lakeland, University of Japan, the university that I'm gonna be graduating from next year, is gonna be moving back to in-person classes this semester, uh, pending you know what, as always. But they are planning on moving back to in-person classes this semester into a new campus as well. So after uh, 30 years at the Shinjuku Sanchome campus, they have moved down to Ryogoku, which is on the Eastern side of Tokyo. It's a more traditional side of Tokyo, not really an area that's covered all that often. It's often overshadowed by other nearby places like Saksa and Ueno. I'm really going to be looking forward to um, going back to in-person classes. And I didn't think I would be the one to say that because you guys know how much of an introvert I am. And when this whole doing online classes thing began, I was actually very much for it because I didn't have a whole lot of money, didn't want to commute into Tokyo every single day. But after a while, it just kind of became this thing where I'm just sitting alone in my room like all the time and I have like no motivation to go outside or really do anything because it's like, well, you know, I have work here, I have school here, I can get food ordered here. So it's like, why would I leave, right? But I was hanging out with uh, some classmates last month and early this month as well. And it just kind of got me more in the vibe of like meeting new people and hanging out with people who, you know, we haven't hung out in person together in some time because of the, uh, you know what. And I was like, man, am I actually craving human contact? What? Get out of here. <laughs> me, Mr. Antisocial. But here we are. The, uh, these current times are certainly a strange time, for sure. But on a serious note, I am glad that uh, in-person classes are gonna be coming back uh, eventually. And also, in really big news, I have been accepted into an internship at my school for the marketing department. So I'm gonna be making a lot of videos uh, for the school, covering a bunch of different events in the department, is really keen to have me on. I'm just uh, happy for the opportunity and to uh, share my skills in other avenues instead of just on my YouTube channels. And as far as other stuff goes uh, in the personal life, uh, it's kind of the same as always, really. Um, just sitting here, just waiting for school to start. You know, I'm still doing the uh, Autobyto stuff, doing some video editing work here and there on the side as well. And yeah, pretty much is what it is, you know? I've been working extra hard this month just to uh, be able to make rent and stuff like that as well. And I'm gonna be getting a nice check come January for sure. So that's gonna be my uh, belated Christmas present, if anything. And I just wanna once again, wish everybody a Merry Christmas or a happy Saturday for uh, those who don't celebrate. and. I just want to say thanks for 
all the support uh, this past year, especially because as you guys know, it's been a little rough for your boy. And I'm just glad that there's uh, people out there who support what I do, despite all the setbacks, shortcomings, things like that. And I want to continue to make uh, good content for you guys, whether it's here or elsewhere. So yeah, that's going to do it for me here in 2021. Can't wait to see you in 2022. Ooh. And with that said, guys, this is Andy. Sign for now. As always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. See you in 2022. <laughs> All right. Bye.